for the transgender spectrum. A to Z. <laughs> Hairy panty wearers at the beginning, post-operative transsexuals at the end, or women. <laughs> and in the middle you have your transvestites, your cross dressers, and your tea girls. My journey started here and has been fluctuating between the two. I first realised there was something different about me when I was old enough to understand that boys didn't wear girls clothes. I've been dressing since I was three, four years old. So I suppose all my life I've known there's been something different about me. And it wasn't really until I was an adult and able to analyse that, that I could look in depth at whether it was right or wrong or I was a freak of nature. Have I ever considered full surgery? Yes. Uh, Charing Cross and all the bits that are involved in that. When I first came out, as I said, I, I, I befriended somebody who was a transsexual. I went to Sparkle with her and I spent the weekend there and I was happened to be staying uh, in a room full of transsexuals. Then when I was in Sparkle, I met some friends that are from Portsmouth and it's them that I'm really good friends with now. Going back to me saying about 35 years of thinking that you're a freak and you don't know what you are and whether you're right or you're wrong, etc, etc, and suddenly you're bombarded with information about what you could be. Going back to the spectrum, you could be, it could be a fetish, it could just be about you getting turned on by women's clothes. Look to that, no, that's not the case because I don't get sexually aroused by women's clothes. It could be that I'm just a cross-dresser, as in I just want to wear women's clothes. But it was more than that, because to me it's about my identity, about who I am. It's more than just clothes and a wig and makeup. I looked at, was I transsexual? Did I want to have my bits cut off? And I, you know, at one point I even went on hormones and tea blockers to see if that's what I wanted to do. At the end of the day, I just decided that I'm happy to span to span it to span the gender spectrum and if i have to wear trousers i'll wear trousers if i have to if i want to wear a skirt i'll wear a skirt and so that's where i ended up comfortably sitting where i do in my opinion somewhere in the middle when you sit and you 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 dress in your, in women's clothes you buy women's clothes you struggle with your gender identity and you don't know who you are, that's your only reference, is that. And so I felt like I was abnormal. It wasn't until the internet came out really that I started to understand about gender identity. Am I comfortable where I am? Probably not 100% comfortable, but I think we have to make compromises at times in our lives. When you've reached 40 and your bone structure's fully formed and you start getting wrinkles and your hair falls out. The work that would be required would be so much more, so much more expensive. I have a job and the idea of would I dress full time in my work and stuff like that, it's just so much. So you, you have to reach a compromise between reality, reality being that I have the body and the face of a middle-aged man. I receive a form of abuse, maybe not necessarily intended to be abusive, but that you get stared at, you get commented, even if it's just people pointing you out to other people. Um, and yes, I have received full verbal hostility and physical hostility to the point that I woke up in hospital having been assaulted. Not my pain necessarily, but the pain that I cause other people. Hey!
The pain that I caused my wife specifically, the pain in the process of, of me trying to express who I was and the resistance of that, that's not me saying my wife was resistant to me, but she didn't want to, she didn't marry a woman, she married a man, and so that was, it was a very difficult time. And I guess the next pain is my children. I've reached a compromise where I'm Rachel most weekends, dressed as Rachel most weekends, and I'm dressed as Jason most work days during during the week. Where does Jason end and Rachel begin? Well to me there's no there's no there's no change. I'm always Rachel. I'm always Jason. They're not two different people. It's the same. It's the same person. Where Jason ends and Rachel begins is who people, what people call me. I have friends that uh, know me as Jason, and they'll call me Jason no matter what clothes I wear. And I have friends that know me as Rachel, and they'll call me Rachel no matter what clothes I wear. It's what they know. It's it's, it's who I am to to the individual, not who I am to myself because I am the one and the same. The Old Vic's a great pub for a number of reasons. A load of my friends go there. Uh, the landlady is absolutely great. I have a load of friends that are tea girls, cross-dressers, transsexuals that go there. It's a really enjoyable place. There's great things that go on there. So it's, I can just relax there and I know that I'm amongst friends and I'm not at risk from other people and... Um, I'm safe, basically. I've only recently told my family, uh, beginning of the year, January, um, and they've reacted uh, really well in the main, uh, my close family, which is uh, really good, actually. Although my brother's known for 16 years, my ex-wife and I told my brother. Um, properly, only a few years ago. I told my family, um by letters, both my family in Portsmouth and my family at home, because I'm not from Portsmouth originally. Uh, my mum already knew. Um, I did it in a letter because it meant I could sit down and think about what I wanted to say. Um, I'm very lucky. I live with uh, a couple of girls and uh, they've been very supportive and I've got a hell of a lot of supportive friends around me. I must have been really lucky in getting a psychiatrist that understood uh, that this wasn't an illness. You know, it's just something that you are. What took so long for me to come out, as it were, is that I'd never really hidden anything as such, but it was uh, because of my, you know, basically a professional career. I was a cabaret artist, my male persona was the cabaret artist, and at the time it was... I was worried that that would damage my, my, my cabaret career. I, I used to think that not telling everybody was the best thing to do, i.e. I was protecting myself and I was protecting everybody around me, my family, uh, my ex-wife, and that I was protecting society by not telling everybody. But I actually think the reverse of that now. There again, that was a relation that, that, that confided in me before they even knew that I was like this, that they had these tendencies. A lot of the friends I know tend to sort of keep themselves locked away. I didn't immediately turn around and say, oh, same with me, I'm the same. I, 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 because it was back in my cabaret days. I, I played it down and was just very, very sympathetic to them. And that's sort of pushed me further to make sure that I had to come out. Because I don't want to get to an old age and then still be locked up at home, dressing at home. I don't think that's, that's right. What gave me the confidence to admit to myself? That's a really tough question. I think for me, it's been seeing beat my friends move on in their life. And that knowing knowing that somehow you can't, that your life's hit the buffers. And for me, it was a case of, do I want to carry on being unhappy? Or do I want to try and change that? Yeah, it's quite scary, but in the end, sometimes you've just got to, you've just got to get on with it. And by doing things, that gives you the confidence. Again, I think that the big thing that gave me the confidence was actually putting myself on Facebook and saying, well, look, here I am. The confidence I got to do it, I think I've always had. 
obviously I've got my normal profile on Facebook and uh, by putting my, my alias uh, profile up there, my alter ego profile up there, slowly helped me come out. What advice would I give to someone going through the same as me is um, been asked this a few times and, and I really think that it's deciding what, when or if to come out into the open is very much an individual thing. The earlier you can find the right support groups in place and, and openly talk to someone you know you can trust, that's imperative and do it as quickly as you can. The best thing that you can possibly do is just bite the bullet and do it because you find that a lot more people are accepting than you ever imagined would be. There was plenty of times when I struggled a lot when I was younger about my gender, but there wasn't the uh, support networks in place then, and certainly wasn't, I'm gonna mention the internet, because it's fantastic nowadays, and uh, that wasn't there then, and I didn't have the information about where I fitted into society way back then, and I wish I did. I like people to take away the fact that it's normality. If you took every single cross-dressing person in the world, that's the population of America. So it's not abnormal, we're not freaks. We're just people, like everybody else. I like to wear women's clothes. I like to present a female persona. I feel more effeminate than most men. I'm not a freak, I'm not dirty, I'm not nasty, I'm not bad. <laughs> I'm not doing anything to anybody, and I just think, it's normality, you know. 40 years ago, homosexuality was illegal. How much happier am I am now than 10 years ago? Different place, different time. With regards to my identity, a million times happier. I love being Rachel. I love dressing as Rachel and feeling like Rachel all the time. I've grown loads, I've learned so much in the last five years of meeting good friends and exploring myself and really realising who I am, who I want to be, who I feel happiest being. And when I am able to be 100% who I want to be, I'm over the moon. I love being me.